All of you experienced homeowners out there might just wanna to totally skip this video because I'm making this one for my friends who are brand new to the home buying scene and need some help with the basics. Quick story time because for some reason this memory is just burned into my brain and it's very clear for me. I remember sitting in a business school classroom at UW when I was 20 years old and we were going around the room talking about like what we wanted to do after college and the person next to me said that they wanted to be a mortgage broker. And I remember thinking clearly, I have no idea what that means. And I was just like racking my brain, didn't, couldn't figure it out. I had never, I didn't know anything about the mortgage process. Here I was, I was a great student, I was at a great college, I had no understanding of how the mortgage or home ownership process works. So no shame, if this is you, we've all been there. Can you imagine how powerful that information could have been at that time? I see it all the time now, what with YouTube and the internet disseminating inter information so efficiently, where kids in their early 20s are buying homes and starting their journey to wealth through real estate invest investing at a very young age. Anyways, if you have no idea how a mortgage works, don't feel bad about it, let's fix it. Thank you for watching. I am a realtor here in Clark County, Washington. I have been selling homes full time for 10 years. I am married with four kids. They're all elementary school age and I love what I do, helping people make their dreams come, tr come true through home ownership. If you are thinking of making a move to Clark County, out of Clark County, within Clark County, whatever it is, give me a call. I would love to help. Really, that's why I make these videos. Also, I'm making a new video every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn the bell on for notifications so that you don't miss a video. If you are ready to start looking at homes, check out my home search website, and that is searchhomesvancouverwatt.com. I am happy to help set up a search for you, or you can just browse to your heart's content without having to worry about your information being sold to a hundred different realtors who are gonna call you every day. In this video, we are talking about the top 10 questions buyers ask about mortgages. And let's just dive right in. One, buyers wanna know what is a mortgage. A residential mortgage is a long-term loan, usually 15 or 30 years in length, provided by a bank, credit union, or other financial institution, and it is secured by the property the buyer is purchasing. If the buyer defaults on the loan, so if they fail to make payments in a timely fashion, the lender can start the foreclosure proceedings to force payment of the debt through the sale of the property. Two, how much can I afford to borrow? This one really depends on your income, your credit score, your debt to income ratio, and down payment amount. The monthly mortgage generally should not exceed 28% of the buyer's gross income. Also, the buyer's total debt payments should not exceed 36% of your of the buyer's gross income. If you wanna know more about this without talking to a lender, I have a handy dandy calculator to share. I'm gonna link that in the description down below. Keep in mind that if you are self-employed, it is a little bit more difficult to qualify for a loan versus being like an hourly or salary W-2 employee. Third question, what are the most common types of mortgages? These include the Federal Housing Administration, AKA FHA, the Veterans Affairs Loans, which are VA loans, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture Loans, USDA. Government-backed loans offer various types of down payments, interest rates, repayment terms, and eligibility standards. Fixed rate mortgages. Fixed rate purchase mortgages are typically 15 or 30 years in length, and the interest rate is locked for the entire term of the loan. There are also adjustable rate mortgages. The rate on arms or adjustable rate mortgages can adjust after three, five, seven, or 10 years based upon the term that the buyer selects. The advantage is a lower interest rate and in return, the buyer gives up the stability of a fixed rate mortgage that it would never adjust. There's also home equity lines of credit. That is a line of credit borrowed against the homeowner's equity in their home. Their home equity is the difference between the appraised value of your home and the current mortgage balance. There's also interest only loans. In an interest only loan, none of the principal is paid down. Consequently, most interest only loans either require a balloon payment where the entire principal, all of it, must be repaid at the end of the loan, or the loan shifts to being fully amortized after a period of being interest only. 
There's also jumbo loans. A loan is considered jumbo if the amount of the mortgage exceeds the loan servicing limits set by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. Right now it's about 726,000 for a single family home in most of the states. Jumbo mortgages are available for primary residences, second or vacation homes and investment properties and are also available in a variety of terms including fixed rate and adjustable rate loans. A jumbo loan is typically typically going to have a higher interest rate, stricter underwriting rules and require a larger down payment than a standard mortgage. Question four, what are the rates for home mortgages? <laughs> this is a good one. Interest rates vary for a lot of factors, including the type of mortgage you're getting, the length or the term of the loan, the borrower's credit score, as well as market conditions, including the indices to which the various types of loans are based. A great website to monitor rates is Mortgage Daily News. Did I say that? MortgageNewsDaily.com. I knew I would mess that one up. Um, and I'll put a link to that down below. Question five, how much are the closing costs and fees associated with getting a mortgage? Closing costs are and closing costs are the fees and expenses associated with finalizing a mortgage, including a loan origination fee, the cost of an appraisal, title insurance, and escrow fees. They vary based upon the type of the loan and the lender. As a rule of thumb, 3% of the purchase price is a good estimate of the amount of closing costs. Question six, what is the difference between a pre-qualification and a pre-approval for a mortgage? A pre-qualification is a document from a lender stating that the lender is tentatively willing to lend the borrower up to a certain amount. This document is based upon certain assumptions and is not a guaranteed loan offer. There are no financials collected or reviewed versus a pre-approval is as close as you can get to confirming your credit worthiness and includes a review of income, assets, and credit history. A pre-approval letter is an offer to lend you a specific amount of money and is usually good for 90 days. Sellers like pre-approvals over pre-qualifications because it shows them that the buyer has already done a lot of the legwork to get a loan. Question seven, what documents do I need to get a mortgage? Most lenders require W-2 statements, tax returns, recent pay stubs, recent bank statements, proof of ID, and other additional documents, uh, depending upon the buyer's financial situation and the type of the mortgage. Question eight, how does the mortgage application process work? The mortgage application process consists of several steps. You have pre-qualification, which is really just like that starting conversation, pre-approval, where you're turning in more stuff and go, the lender has a chance to go through everything, then loan application, submission, underwriting, appraisal, title search, and closing. Each step involves the collection and verification of various documents and information and culminates in the final loan approval and property purchase. The process can take as little as 30 days, sometimes less, and but 45 days is also pretty common. If there is a problem with the appraisal, a lien on the property, a title problem, or a different issue, loan approval can take longer. Question nine, what happens after I get approved for a mortgage? After being approved for a mortgage, you will receive a loan commitment letter outlining the terms and conditions of the loan. Then you will proceed to the closing process, which involves signing all of your loan documents, transferring your funds to escrow for closing, and ultimately acquiring the property title. Many states require the buyer and their agent to attend a closing at the title company to sign closing documents in person. Question 10, what are some common mistakes to avoid when getting a mortgage? The first common mistake is not getting approved in advance. So starting to see properties, falling in love with the house, writing an offer, and then losing it because you don't have your pre-approval all hammered out. Another common mistake is a failure to reach out to a mortgage professional to determine exactly how much they can qualify for and whether they are eligible for down payment assistance. Another mistake is not knowing that closing costs are on top of the down payment amount. Many people save and save and save and then when they finally hit however much they're planning on putting down for a mortgage, they think that they're there, not fully understanding that they need that extra 3%-ish to close the loan. Another common mistake is if interest rates are rising, 
if you fail to lock in your rate for 60 to 90 days when you are applying for the loan. So if you get under contract, you can't lock in until you're under contract, but if you get under contract and you don't lock in your interest rate and then from the time you're under contract, the next couple of weeks, rates go up, like they can't go back in time and give you a lower rate. Another common mistake is choosing the wrong type of mortgage for their situation. Some people regret not having a better understanding about how your credit score impacts your interest rate and your ability to qualify for a loan. Because if you're not quite ready to buy a house and you have time, work on your credit score. And if this something is something you wanna do, I can connect you to a lender who can provide for you some credit repair help. Okay, this is a big one. People regret making unnecessary purchases while they're under contract. This can include buying furniture or other items for your new home, which then negatively impacts your debt ratios and cause, causes them to not qualify for their loan. I have had this happen before, where a buyer went under contract, went out and bought a Harley, and then no longer qualified for the loan. I've also seen clients do huge things like sell their car during a transaction in order to get their debt to income ratios right to get that like best interest rate. Okay, there is your general overview of what a mortgage is. <laughs> and a lot of the, the top questions that people ask about mortgages. If you wanna talk about this more, reach out anytime. I do offer free Zoom consultations on the home buying process. I would happy, be happy to schedule that with you. Just give me a call or shoot me an email. My information is down below.